Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Recent King Tut Discoveries Perhaps the most famous ancient Egyptian burial ever discovered is that of King Tutankhamun, better known as King Tut. British archaeologist Howard Carter found the tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings in 1922. It was the first pharaoh's tomb that hadn't been looted at some point throughout history. King Tut was only 18 years old when he died abruptly for reasons that remain unclear to this day. He remained an obscure, little-known figure in history until Carter discovered his tomb and the king rose to fame. It took years for archaeologists to clear thousands of artifacts from the boy king's tomb. The most magnificent discovery is the sarcophagus the king was found in. It was made from pure gold and kept his remains safe for 3,000 years. But there were other objects found inside the burial that offered some insight into the young ruler's short life. For example, two mummified fetuses were laid to rest nearby. It wasn't until 2008 that experts were able to determine that the babies were actually King Tut's daughters and that they were likely mothered by his half-sister and great royal wife, Ankesenamun. As scholars continue to study the ancient ruler, they are able to give the public a more accurate depiction of him. The Milwaukee Public Museum currently has a display of King Tut and his chariot that Education Programs Coordinator Richard Hederman described as a more cutting-edge level of Tut scholarship. He went on to explain that the chariot's two horses were modeled after what was found in the tomb and based on popular styles of the time. Experts even relied on CT scans of Tut's face to create a realistic forensic reconstruction. A Missing Eighth Continent Millions of years ago, the Earth was a very different place. Sometime between 87 and 79 million years ago, a large piece of the Earth's crust broke free from the supercontinent of Gondwana. It began to sink into the ocean, and 23 million years after it started its descent, it was completely submerged. Scientists officially discovered the 2 million square mile sunken landmass known as Zealandia during the 1990s and spent several years going back and forth on what to classify it as. Then, finally, in 2017, a study announced that Zealandia met all the qualifications for being classified as a submerged continent, rather than a continental fragment. It's roughly a billion years old, making it the world's youngest continent. It's also the smallest and thinnest, and contains just a handful of islands sticking out of the water. The remaining 94% of Zealandia sits beneath the waves where it went unnoticed for centuries as explorers searched the globe for new continents. It hasn't been studied much, for the obvious reason that it is thousands of feet below the water's surface, but scientists are working to learn more about it now that they know that it's there. Ancient Martian Volcano Less than a year after landing on Mars, NASA's Perseverance rover has made at least one surprising discovery. Recent findings indicate that lava once flowed at the site of an ancient lake on the red planet known as the Jezero Crater. Scientists had previously wondered if the bedrock the rover drives on was made of sedimentary rock, if the material was deposited by an ancient river, or if it was igneous rock, which is made from cooled volcanic material. They were close to giving up on ever finding out the answer when the Perseverance used its array of sophisticated instruments to examine the rock's composition and mineral content. The analysis revealed the presence of olivine and pyroxene crystals, which are both indicators that the rock came from volcanic lava flows. It was formed from thick, cooling magma and was then altered several times by water when the planet still had an abundance of liquid. Scientists are studying the samples to learn more about the past presence of water on the red planet. They are also trying to figure out if the rocks were formed in a cooling lake of lava or some other way, perhaps in an underground chamber that was eventually exposed by erosion. The Glass Octopus The seldom-seen glass octopus is almost completely transparent. Its eyes, optic nerve, and digestive tract are the only opaque parts of its body. The species was first discovered in 1918, but it's only been seen a handful of times since then. And until recently, the only way for scientists to study the glass octopus was by examining the gut contents of its predators. Consequently, they know very little about these elusive creatures, which live between 200 and 3,000 meters below the surface in tropical and subtropical waters. 
researchers finally got the chance to see a glass octopus in its natural habitat over the summer during a 34-day expedition off the remote Phoenix Islands, more than 3,200 miles northeast of Sydney. In addition to spotting the rare deep dweller, the team discovered what they believe are several previously unknown aquatic species. They also mapped over 11,500 miles of the sea floor around the Phoenix Islands and captured video of the marine life to be found there, including the world's largest living fish, known as the whale shark. The exploration was part of an ongoing effort among experts to learn more about what lies within the planet's vastly understudied oceans. Scientists say that looking out for our own well-being starts with keeping these ecosystems healthy. What other kinds of creatures do you think lurk deep below the ocean surface? Let me know in the comments below! Earliest Origins of Mammal Teeth 300 million years ago, a primitive reptile called Shashajaya burmani modified its teeth in response to environmental instability, laying the foundations for what eventually became the incisor, the canine, and molar teeth that all modern mammals have. Yes, you heard that right! We got our teeth from an ancient and distantly related reptile! Dr. Suresh Singh, who participated in a recent study on the creature, explained that there is a clear difference in shape between teeth in different parts of the animal's mouth. He described the Saja Jaya's chompers as the precursors to what you see among today's mammals, and that this is the oldest known record of these types of teeth in the evolutionary tree. The creature existed during the late Carboniferous period, when giant insects roamed the earth and the planet was covered in swampy rainforests. When climate change saw these wetlands replaced with more arid and seasonal habitats, the diversity and availability of prey changed. It appears as though the teeth transformed in response to these changes, enabling it to hunt both semi-aquatic and land animals. The species became a top predator thanks to its teeth. Shasha Jaya was a member of a group of mammal-like reptiles called therapsids, which eventually evolved into the earliest mammals. The fossil that was examined in the study was found in a part of Utah known as the Valley of the Gods, where numerous other prehistoric creatures have been unearthed. Roman Era Ring While exploring a pair of shipwrecks off the Israeli coast near the ancient port city of Caesarea, archaeologists discovered something truly amazing. They found a Roman-era gold ring bearing an image of a shepherd boy carrying a sheep on his shoulders. Set against a green stone, early Christians used images like this to represent Jesus. The team found other treasures as well, including bronze and silver coin hoards dating back to the 3rd century, and an early 14th century coin hoard. They also uncovered a ring bearing a red gemstone, Roman-era figurines, and bronze bells that were used to ward off evil spirits. The ship's hulls sit just 13 feet underwater in the Mediterranean. They were most likely wrecked during a storm while anchored nearby, according to Israel Antiquities Authority spokesperson Jacob Sharvet. He further explained in a BBC interview that Caesarea was home to one of the first Christian communities. It's where the Apostle Peter's baptism of the Roman centurion Cornelius marked the first instance of the acceptance of a non-Jew. From there, he said Christianity went on to spread throughout the world. Oldest Domestic Dog in the Americas The evolution of modern domestic dogs is a rather confusing topic. In fact, researchers are still trying to figure out when, where, and from whom they evolved, as well as how they first reached certain parts of the world, including North America. They added a piece to the puzzle in early 2021 when a study led by the University of Buffalo identified the oldest confirmed remains of a domestic dog in the Americas. The evidence came in the form of a femur fragment belonging to a canine that lived and died in southeast Alaska around 10,150 years ago. A DNA analysis revealed that the dog descended from a lineage that diverged from Siberian dogs as far back as 16,700 years ago. At the time, Humans may have been migrating to the continent along a coastal route that encompassed the region the dog's remains were found in. In a statement, study leader and evolutionary biologist Charlotte Lindquist explained that dogs are a proxy for human occupation, meaning that their presence is an indicator that people were in an area at a given time. She pointed out that the findings fall in line with the theory that humans migrated to the Americas toward the end of the last ice age as coastal glaciers retreated 
and they apparently brought their canine companions with them. It represented the first of several waves of dog migrations into the Americas, answering the question of when dogs first arrived on the continents, until or unless older evidence is found. We've been with dogs for a very long time. Largest Millipede Ever England had a much more tropical climate 326 million years ago. Back then, it was home to an 8-foot-long millipede that weighed as much as 110 pounds and had between 32 and 64 legs. Scary, right? To reach such a large size, it likely ate a high-nutrient diet consisting of nuts and seeds, and even small amphibians and other creatures. It was the largest millipede ever known to exist, so it probably ate whatever fit into its mouth. The fossilized creature, known as an Arthropleura, was discovered on a beach in Northumberland, England in 2018. It's the third Arthropleura ever found, with the previous two specimens having been discovered in Germany, and it's much older and bigger than both. The gargantuan millipede's fossil was found in a chunk of sandstone that fell onto the beach. Scientists think that this site was part of an old river channel and that the fossil may not encompass the millipede itself, but an exoskeleton that the creature shed when it was growing even bigger. Fossils like this are rare, according to Dr. Neil Davies, who told the BBC that because experts haven't found a fossilized Arthropleura head, their knowledge of the creature remains limited. The recently discovered specimen is slated to soon go on display in Cambridge. Mass Migration Changes DNA During the middle to the late Bronze Age, a massive wave of migrants swept through mainland Europe and into Britain. Nobody knows what caused this large-scale movement, but a new study has revealed that it caused noticeable changes in the genetic makeup of the population. Researchers analyzed the DNA of 793 ancient skeletons found in Great Britain. They noticed that a gene enabling people to digest raw milk increased rapidly in the region during the early Iron Age, preceding the change elsewhere throughout Northern Europe by about 1,000 years. The genetic effects of the mass migration were present as early as 1400 BC in Kent. These changes remained confined to the area until around 1000 BC, when the ancestry all throughout England and Wales changed. Roughly half of the DNA in Iron Age Britain came from the newly arrived migrants, according to lead researcher David Reich, who spoke with the BBC. So where did these people come from? So far, the closest matches researchers have found are to ancient populations in France, but they haven't yet confirmed the findings. The people who were in Britain before the migrants arrived descended mainly from the Beaker people, a culture that had come to the region at the end of the Neolithic era around the same time Stonehenge was built. In addition to bringing new DNA to the region, the Bronze Age wave of arrivals brought their own culture and customs, including Celtic languages. It's unknown whether they were the first Celtic-speaking group in Britain, or if they simply used their own versions of it. The effects the newcomers had on the existing population are unclear as far as the language goes, but their presence certainly impacted the genetics and lifestyle of the people who were already there, especially through the dietary changes that came along with being lactose tolerant. Oldest Ever Family Tree Scientists have just put together one of the oldest ever family trees based on the nearly 6,000-year-old Hazelton North Tomb in Cotswold Hills, England. Unearthed during the 1980s, the burial consisted of the remains of 35 people. They were excavated as part of an effort to preserve what was left of the grave after hundreds of years of farming on the land had destroyed most of it. In recent years, another team of scientists managed to extract DNA from the remains. They uncovered a complex web of relationships between the tomb's occupants, which appear to include a five-generation lineage that started with a man and his four wives. Altogether, the team managed to narrow down the relationships between 27 of the burial's 35 occupants. Interestingly, the family included four so-called stepsons, who bore their mother's lineage but were not descended from any of the men in the tomb. Two young girls were buried in the grave, but there were no adult daughters who researchers think may have been laid to rest in their spouses' tombs. There were five unrelated men found in the burial who were probably connected to the family in some way but weren't genetically related. The exact nature of these relationships is still a mystery, but they were all buried together, so they must have been pretty close. 
Most Neolithic tombs found in Europe don't display this level of complexity. The family buried at Hazelton North was most likely polygamous and reflects a patrilineal way of life from the society's earlier days when they arrived to the area as immigrants. Badger Archaeologist A massive trove of treasure was discovered in northwest Spain, and it consists of over 200 coins from the Roman era. But what's far more fascinating than the coins themselves is the fact that they weren't found by archaeologists. They weren't even found by humans. It was a single hungry badger digging for food that stumbled upon this incredible discovery by accident. January of 2021 was a rough year for Spain. They were hit by a rare snowstorm, the most intense in the last half century. During the storm, a confused badger had to dig around for food, searching for its typical diet of berries, insects, and worms. Rather than finding something to eat, it found a small hidden treasure of metal discs. By the time archaeologists were made aware of the find, the coins had already been dispersed over the floor of a cave. They then did their own excavation, finding a total of 209 coins from between the 3rd and 5th century. This was the late Roman era, just before the final collapse. The coins came from as far as Constantinople, likely passing through Rome, into Lyon in France, and then to Spain. How in the world they ended up buried at the entrance to a cave is a total mystery. Temple of the Water Cult In Peru, archaeologists have excavated a megalithic temple from 3,000 years ago. They say the temple was used by a water cult who practiced fertility rituals inside its walls. The temple was found at Huaca el Toro in the Zana Valley. It's the very first massive temple made from stones that's ever been found in the valley. Because of this, researchers don't know a whole lot about the people who made it, but what they believe is that the residents of the temple literally worshipped water. They probably built the temple in the valley, close to where two ancient rivers connect, as a type of territorial symbolism. And here's where things get really impressive. The temple was constructed using huge stones moved into the valley from a mountain about two miles away. While that distance might not seem like much to us, it was a huge distance to drag stones that weighed several tons. Even more interesting is that the construction went on over three distinct time periods. The initial construction was in 1500 BC, with the foundation and first stones being laid. Then, between 800 and 400 BC, the megalithic temple itself was erected by the Chavan people, a pre-Inca civilization. Then, between 400 and 250 BC, circular columns were added, a huge roof was installed, and the work was complete. Almost immediately after, the temple was abandoned. Seemingly, no one used the structure again for another 1300 years, until the Chumi culture showed up and made use of it as a burial ground. Revolutionary War Battlefield In South Carolina, archaeologists have discovered the site of the Battle of Tar Bluff. The battle was fought in August of 1782, when America was still in its infancy. It's mainly remembered today as the place where John Lawrence, friend of George Washington and Alexander Hamilton, was killed in battle. Lawrence and 140 infantrymen were trying to secure part of the Combahee River when the British ambushed them. The Americans had been getting annoyed by the British soldiers looting their nearby farms and were hoping to put an end to it. Instead, Lawrence and his men were killed. Mike Yiannopoulos with the South Carolina Battleground Preservation Trust pinpointed the exact location of the battlefield using GPS technology and metal detectors. They then started digging and have since found all kinds of amazing wartime artifacts. They've discovered an Irish halfpenny from 1775, plenty of British grape shot, musket balls, and even a fully intact bayonet. Mysterious Symbols In the desert of Qatar, there are mysterious symbols carved into soft rock, and researchers remain unsure of their meaning. These symbols can be found on the northeastern coast of the country in the sand of the barren desert. Centuries ago, people used limestone outcrops as blank canvases to craft symbols, motifs, and other bizarre objects. In total, archaeologists have identified at least 900 rock carvings at the site of Al Jassasiya, but identifying and understanding are two totally different things. According to Furhan Sakal, head of the excavations at Qatar Museums, 
The carvings found here are unique and unlike any found anywhere else in the world. They show a high degree of creativity and abstract thinking, something not typically seen in other prehistoric works of art. Normally, people carve things that they saw into the rock. Some Native Americans drew animals, themselves, hunting parties, and other recognizable representations of daily life. But here, the symbols and designs are abstract and confusing. Some experts believe the carvings may have been used for divination. There are dozens of configurations of small holes, parallel lines, and other geometric features that don't seem to mean anything, at least not to us. Experts don't even know how old the rock art is because it's been too challenging to date. The best hypothesis is that people were carving strange symbols into the rocks here from some time between the Neolithic days to the more recent Islamic times. Ancient Parasites When researchers were studying the contents of an ancient cesspit beneath a toilet in Jerusalem, they uncovered the remains of intestinal parasite eggs. The eggs were probably the result of poor sanitary conditions. But the reason the discovery is so interesting is that this was no ordinary toilet they were investigating. It came from the garden of a luxury mansion from the 7th century BC. 2,700 years ago, this stone toilet was the epitome of luxury. The only reason the eggs survived long enough for us to study them is that the cesspit was truly disgusting. Buried underground and full of refuse, the parasite eggs remained relatively preserved. The eggs would have hatched into intestinal worms that could cause all kinds of nasty symptoms from abdominal pain to diarrhea. Intestinal worms were very dangerous for children, as they often led to malnutrition and even death. Previously, researchers thought unsanitary toilet conditions may have only been a problem for the poor of that time. However, since these parasites were found in such a luxurious estate, it seems they were also a problem for the rich and the powerful. Even kings and rulers had poor sanitary conditions that led to their drinking water being contaminated by fecal matter. It also didn't help that at the time, no one knew they were supposed to wash their hands, and practices such as using feces to fertilize crops and urine to brush your teeth were pretty common. The Salt Mines of Garmsar The salt mines of Garmsar extend like the winding tunnels of hell beneath the earth. There are over 92 separate salt mines beneath the city in the Semnan province of Iran, with some still in use today. But some are old, having been carved out long ago by the inhabitants of the region. The salt mines here are unique because they yield salt of over 98% purity. They are also really gorgeous. The salt mines, the ones that are abandoned, are so big you could drive a double-decker bus through them. The result of removing salt for so many years is huge underground caverns that look like they could house a race of subterranean cave people. The walls are smooth as sand, there are massive columns that keep the roof from collapsing, and they even have medicinal purposes. Locals believe the salt mines can be used to cure and treat diseases. It's believed that by breathing the air inside the salty underground chambers, one can heal themselves of any respiratory ailment. This makes the mines not only popular with tourists, but also with locals who are looking to breathe a bit better. Some of these salt mines have even been flooded and require small boats to explore. Do you believe in the healing power of salt? Let me know in the comments below. Bronze Age Sauna On Orkney in Scotland, archaeologists have uncovered an extraordinarily rare sauna from the Bronze Age. It was one of over 30 different buildings and structures uncovered during the most recent dig on Orkney, with the structures dating from between 4000 to 1000 BC. That means they were built by people living in the region between 6,000 and 3,000 years ago. The sauna was described by archaeologists as being in remarkable condition for how old it is. They've even put forth some explanations as to what the ancient people may have used it for. It could have been constructed specifically for ritual ceremonies. It may also have been a special building reserved for women while giving birth. Thirdly, the ancient sauna or steam house could have been a depository for bodies where they were taken to be purified in steam before being buried. The structure itself consists of a fireplace, a water tank, and a pile of burnt stones. It also had several different cells attached to it so that multiple people could use the sauna at the same time. The water tank was actually enormous. 
installed at the central part of the structure to produce boiling water and steam to circulate through all the adjacent cells. It's amazing that even 6,000 years ago, our ancient ancestors had figured out how to relax in style. Although archaeologists theorize this discovery is evidence of some kind of birthing house or ritual structure, it may have just been an ordinary sauna used for rest and relaxation. Aztec Sacrifices A treasure trove of Aztec war sacrifices has been discovered in Mexico City. Some of these treasures include a statue of a jaguar dressed as a warrior, flint knives decorated with pearls, and even the body of a young child dressed to look like an Aztec god of war. Experts believe these sacrificial offerings were deposited hundreds of years ago by Aztec priests in a ritual platform once located at the entrance to the temple. They also believe the offerings could be proof that an ancient Aztec king is buried somewhere nearby. Archaeologist Leonardo Lopez Luján told reporters that he and his team have enormous expectations. They believe the more they dig, the more interesting objects they'll discover. The ultimate goal is to find where this mysterious king is buried, if there is indeed a secret tomb somewhere under the temple. You may even recognize the name of the temple. It's called Templo Mayor and it's located in the heart of Mexico City, near the Zócalo Plaza. Before the Spanish conquest of Mexico in 1521, this entire area was the center of the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. Templo Mayor was a pyramid that stood over 15 stories tall, but the Spanish burned it down and built their own structures on top of it. Whatever secrets were buried before the Spanish ever arrived are still hiding beneath Mexico City streets. Offerings like this point archaeologists in the right direction. And hopefully, it's just a matter of time before they dig deep enough to uncover the secrets of the old Aztec rulers. Ancient Copper Workshop In Israel's Negev Desert, archaeologists have discovered a copper workshop from 6,500 years ago. Based on the evidence found here, the experts say technology for producing copper was likely an extremely close-guarded secret. In other words, the technology used to produce copper wasn't widely available and was guarded by the ruling class so that they could retain control over the ability to produce copper. It was the most impressive technology back then, and whoever controlled it held all the power. In fact, Professor Ben Yosef said no technology was more sophisticated in the entire ancient world than refining copper. The excavations here began in 2017, when the workshop was first discovered. Archaeologists found the leftover pieces of a furnace, a primitive installation of tin, a copper slag, and leftover stone tools. Even though metalworking was known 6,500 years ago, it wasn't that advanced. People still used stone tools and whatever was easiest to shape. Another interesting fact is that by looking at the isotopes of ore remnants, scientists were able to identify the exact place where the copper came from. Traders had actually brought it from Jordan, around 60 miles away, to be refined. The people who traded the raw copper to those living in the Negev desert didn't even have the technology to refine it themselves. Experts believe the procurers of the ore were the Gasulian culture, but were not nearly as technologically advanced as the people living in Israel. They got swindled out of the copper ore in trade, then those with the knowledge to turn the copper into useful tools did so. They did it without ever sharing their knowledge with anyone else, likely to maintain their importance in the region. Powerful Ancient Leader A treasure from 4,000 years ago is changing history. More accurately, it's changing our interpretation of history. A trove of jewelry was uncovered in Spain, alongside the remains of a woman and a man at the archaeological site of La Almoloya. What makes this discovery so unique is that experts say the man was probably the woman's consort. They believe that the jewels belonged to her and she was a powerful local leader. If true, it could dispel gender myths that ancient Europeans did not often have female rulers. The site of La Almoloya can be found in the forest outside of Cartagena. According to National Geographic, the burial took place around the year 1700 BC. Coincidentally, other discoveries from the same time period found in Spain have already proven that women were considered adults long before men. Girls as young as six have been found buried with tools and weapons, while the youngest boys buried with these artifacts were much older, in their teens. 
What this suggests is that women may have been in significant positions of power. This particular female came from the Argaric culture and has been nicknamed by scientists the Princess of Lalmoloya. No one is sure exactly what kind of political power she had, what her role was in society, or even what kind of beliefs the Argaric had. But based on the physical evidence, the people of El Argar may have been ruled by more women than men. Human remains. One thing you don't expect to find inside the belly of an alligator, human remains. However, that's just what happened in Louisiana after a massive gator was captured and killed. The giant reptile was caught with help from officials with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It was wandering through the neighborhood of Avery Estates, close to where Timothy Satterley Sr., a 71-year-old man, went missing on August 30th. The creature was measured at 12 feet, 3.6 meters long, and weighed in at 504 pounds, 228 kilograms. When officials cut the beast open to see what was in its stomach, they discovered a body inside. Police are fairly certain the remains belong to Timothy. The senior was reported missing after his wife called the police to say that he had been attacked by an alligator outside of their home. Hurricane Ida had just ravaged Louisiana, and the floodwaters had come extremely close to Timothy and his wife's house. Her husband had gone outside, and that was when the alligator literally grabbed him from their front steps and dragged him off into the murky water. His wife tried desperately to grab hold of her husband, but she just didn't have the strength. She phoned for help, but her husband was gone, and there was nothing she could do. Believe it or not, fatal alligator attacks on humans are actually rare in Louisiana. Between 1999 and 2019, only 10 people were killed in the entire southeastern U.S. by alligators. It was the floodwaters that brought the alligator so close to Timothy's home that led to his attack. Gators generally keep to themselves unless protecting their young, nests, or challenge directly. When prepping for a hurricane, people generally fear falling tree limbs, storm surge, or breaking window glass. Alligator attacks in your front yard are hardly the normal threat. For Timothy Satterley Sr., however, it led to his demise. A stalking alligator. Vicky Remy Baker was on what was supposed to be a peaceful paddleboarding trip in Florida when she found herself being stalked by an alligator. Amazingly, the entire confrontation was caught on video, a video which Vicky uploaded to Facebook for everyone to see. In the footage, she can be heard screaming at the alligator to get away from her, but the beast wasn't taking any notice. She then screamed in horror as the alligator hissed and moved in to take a bite. Thinking quickly, she bashed it with her paddle. She then became stranded on her flimsy paddle board, a packed lunch sitting behind her and some supplies packed away in bags between her feet, as the alligator bumped its nose against the board and thought about how it was going to trick her into the water. At this point, the alligator was pretty angry. Somebody off camera can even be heard warning Vicky to start backing up because she had made it extremely upset. And this thing was huge roughly four feet long, and with an incredibly powerful bite, if given the opportunity. She managed to get away this time, as the alligator finally gave up and swam away. But this is just one of those things that happens in the Sunshine State. It's been reported that there is one alligator here for every 15 residents. Aggressive gator attacks, however, run on the rare side, with the chance of actually getting bitten by an alligator somewhere around 1 in 3.2 million. Have you ever been up close and personal with an alligator? Let me know in the comments below, inside its mouth. A man in Florida was searching for prehistoric shark teeth at his local river when he came face to face with a very real prehistoric monster. The man's name? Jeffrey Heim, and he was hoping to find some megalodon's teeth hiding in the grime at the bottom of the Mayaka River. What he found instead was a very large and very angry alligator. Jeffrey had only been in the water for a few minutes when he felt something hit him with such force that he thought he'd been run over by a boat. It hit him so hard that Jeffrey said he thought it was a propeller. A fraction of a second later, he realized he was actually inside the mouth of an alligator. The reptile was over nine feet long, potentially female, 
and protecting her eggs. What's really incredible is that the alligator, even though it had surprised Heim and managed to get him partly inside of her mouth, didn't try to finish him off. She was simply warning him to get out of the area and leave her eggs alone. She relaxed her jaws, letting Jeffrey slip out, and then swam away. But don't be fooled. Just because the alligator didn't try to kill Jeffrey didn't mean she left him without any injuries. He needed 34 stitches put in his head and had a minor skull fracture. He also had bite marks on one of his hands. Doctors said Jeffrey was lucky that he didn't suffer any brain damage. For days after the attack, the swelling in his head was so severe that he couldn't open his left eye. Luckily for him, he still expected to make a full recovery. Can you imagine being in the jaws of this nearly prehistoric beast and slipping away safely? Incredible! Birthday party gone wrong A birthday party went horribly wrong in Utah when an animal trainer was viciously attacked by the very alligator she was trying to feed. The feeding was part of a young girl's birthday party in which the trainer was supposed to give the alligator a bit of meat to impress the kids. But instead of taking the piece of meat, the alligator bit down on the woman's hand and would not let go. It had her entire hand in its mouth, risking extreme damage or loss of her limb. The only reason she managed to get away is that one of the adult guests jumped into action and pried the terrifying reptile's jaws apart. The victim was 31-year-old Lindsay Bull. The alligator, named Darth Gator, is over eight and a half feet. He's the star attraction at Scales and Tails Utah, and Lindsay has fed him hundreds of times before. But this time, he was in a bit of a mood. Instead of just taking the food like he was supposed to, he tried to climb out of his enclosure, and that was when Lindsay got her hand stuck in its mouth. Still, Lindsay thought she could get out of it. At least, she did until she felt it bite down harder. The alligator then started to thrash, and that was when she knew she was in deep trouble. In the end, she suffered tendon damage and chipped bones in both her wrist and hand. She had to have an operation. She was put on an aggressive antibiotic treatment, and she'll need to have physical therapy. Nonetheless, she should regain full control of her hand. She's also told news outlets that she can't wait to be back at work so she can hang out with her alligator friend. Even though Darth Gator tried to eat her, she holds no bad feelings towards the animal. What would you do if an animal encounter at your party turned into an attack? Tell me below in the comments. A dangerous fall. In St. Petersburg, Florida, a woman accidentally fell into a canal and was attacked by an alligator. The victim in this case has not been identified, though they were reportedly homeless. The woman was resting on a seawall, not doing anything and not interested in going anywhere. As she was relaxing, she tipped over and plummeted into the canal waters below. Luckily, somebody walking by heard her cries of terror and dialed 911. But between the police arriving and the woman falling into the water, an alligator saw an opportunity for an easy meal. The victim, in her 50s, sustained major injuries to her arms and upper torso as the alligator started taking sample bites. It just kept nibbling on her, not thrashing violently enough to kill, but still doing serious damage. When the authorities finally arrived, they used ladders and safety lines as well as a rescue basket to pull the victim from the canal. They had to be careful because the alligator was still lurking around, almost as if it was curious to see what would happen next. It was measured at about 10 feet and 11 inches long, absolutely giant even for a Florida alligator. The alligator was later tracked down and euthanized, with the woman recovering from the savage attack in the hospital. Hero Dad in Texas, a father sprang into action when he noticed a giant alligator was about to attack his four-year-old daughter. His name is Andrew Grand, a resident of League City. His young daughter was at the edge of a canal behind their home with a fishing rod, trying to snag some fish and looking for crab. She was with her babysitter and her brother, but it would be her father who first saw the alligator getting dangerously close to the edge of the canal. According to what he later told reporters, he didn't know what its intentions were, but he wasn't about to find out. He sprinted to the canal as quickly as he could, scooped up his daughter in one fast motion, and threw her over the fence. The only thing in his head was getting her out of the way of the alligator. And that was when he saw how big the beast was. 
Andrew is used to alligators hanging around the property, but he says they normally just swim by in the canal and don't bother anyone. This particular reptile looked to be over 12 feet long and upwards of 600 pounds, pretty massive for a gator cruising through the canals. After the close call, Andrew called a local alligator hunter who wrangled up a few townsfolk and captured the threatening beast. But don't worry, this alligator wasn't euthanized. It was relocated to a nearby adventure park and animal rescue center. Would you ever let your children play outside your home knowing that there were giant alligators lurking around your backyard? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, and don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. Burglary Gone Bad In Florida, a burglary suspect was eaten by an alligator after attempting to evade capture by hiding in a body of water from police. In the most Florida thing ever, a 22-year-old man burglarized a series of homes and then tried to avoid the cops by wading into a lake. The young man may have thought he was being clever, just assuming he would be able to swim his way across the lake and escape with the stolen goods. But a giant 11-foot alligator had other plans. The alligator got a hold of him, dragged him under the water, and the young man did not survive the attack. According to the official autopsy, Matthew Riggins died from drowning. A necropsy on the alligator itself revealed parts of Matthew's body still inside its stomach. Nobody knows exactly how the attack went down, but either way, Matthew was on the losing end. What's really crazy is that his body wasn't even discovered for 10 days after it had happened. Parts of Matthew's remains were found floating in the lake with the extremely aggressive alligator lurking nearby. As a result, investigators were able to determine what had likely happened to the unfortunate suspected burglar. Alligators versus Sharks A new study has found that American alligators don't only eat humans, they also eat sharks. Well, sharks and stingrays, but sharks are more shocking. Study leader James Nifong from Kansas State University says the results of the study were particularly surprising because alligators are normally freshwater predators. But James was able to identify four separate times in which an American alligator chowed down on a shark, and not even the same kind of shark, a lemon shark, a nurse shark, and a bonnethead shark. James even managed to find historical accounts of sharks eating alligators. What all this means is that sharks and alligators, two of the oldest and most highly advanced predators anywhere on the planet, square off more often than people might have imagined. They may even actually be mortal enemies, battling one another every so often throughout the past few million years. It would certainly make for an interesting battle, don't you think? Horror at Disney World Lane Graves, just two years old, wanted to build a sandcastle. He was staying at the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa with his family as part of a trip to Disney World in Central Florida. He was scooping wet sand into a small plastic bucket when suddenly an alligator lurched out of the water and grabbed the young child by his head. His father, who was standing just a few feet away with his wife and Lane's four-year-old sister, saw the whole thing unfold. He acted on instinct, jumping into the water and grabbing the alligator by its snout. He tried desperately to get the alligator's mouth open, but he just wasn't strong enough. Within seconds, the alligator had wriggled away, taking the boy with it under the water. This was one of the most horrible alligator attacks to ever happen in the US. It was literal horror, with at least one witness of the attack losing consciousness because they were so distraught. The poor boy wasn't found for another 16 hours. The medical examiner ruled the cause of death as traumatic neck injury. It looks like the alligator snapped the boy's neck and then drowned him. What's really shocking is that prior to the attack, at least two people had complained to Disney workers that they saw an alligator lurking in the water at the resort. Nothing was done. Then during the search for Lane's body, officers killed six alligators. Two of them were at least seven feet and found right at the edge of the beach, dead in the water. A woman in Florida was found floating dead in a retention pond after being beaten up by an alligator. According to the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, her body was uncovered at just before nine o'clock at night on a Sunday in the pond behind a local bar and grill in Valrico. 
Investigators weren't able to say for sure if she had been eaten by an alligator, but injuries found on her body were indeed consistent with alligator bites. Investigators also noted that alligators are known to frequent the pond. The big issue here is that nobody can quite figure out how she ended up the victim of an alligator attack. She had been celebrating the 4th of July with friends and family at the bar and grill when she disappeared. We don't know if the alligator snuck up on her while she was getting some fresh air, if she was drunk and fell into the pond, or if somebody intentionally pushed her in, knowing what would happen. This could be a case of murder by alligator, though right now we just don't know. As far as police seem to be concerned, it was likely a tragic accident. Have you ever come face to face with an alligator? If so, let me know about it in the comments, and thanks for watching today's video. Remember to hit subscribe and check out more awesome stuff from the channel. Until next time, see you later alligators.